Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and this is your Tropical Cyclone Outlook. Nationwide for the next two weeks we've got plenty of details to talk about including a potential Queensland Tropical Cyclone slash Tropical Low developing up in the Coral Sea and we've also got a strong Tropical Cyclone potential over in Western Australia. We could really be talking about a high-end system over there. Now if you are brand new to my channel please do consider subscribing. I will be your home for Tropical Cyclone coverage in the next couple of weeks so please do consider subscribing as well. Let's see if we can push ourselves over the 75,000 follower mile stone here on YouTube. But let's get stuck straight into things this afternoon over in the Coral Sea. We do have some significant convective activity ongoing here through the Coral Sea, not as significant as what we're seeing with the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji, that's the WA concern over here. But you can see we do actually have some convection, you know, bubbling away out here associated with the tropical low pressure system, which is located just to the north of New Caledonia. Now, the chance here is that we actually see a tropical cyclone out of this system, but it's not expected to impact Australia in any way, shape or form. The system is heading up towards the northeast it's expected to make a turn and skim the coast of New Caledonia before being spun around towards New Zealand later on into next week. And we are expecting the system here to clip New Caledonia with cyclone force winds sometime early next week. Gale force winds likely onto the northern edges of New Caledonia and we are likely to see some strong wind gusts, big waves and heavy rainfall in this vicinity as well. We've got that monsoon trough which is, you know, pumping a few showers and thunderstorms also through parts of central Queensland indirectly associated with this system here but central and northern Queensland still getting a couple of showers and thunderstorms and that is continuing to add to the concern that we're seeing in regards to the central Queensland highlands and the Fitzroy River catchment which is seeing some absolutely whopping flooding right now. Let's just have a look at some of the webcam footage because it is just it really is quite a dramatic sight. This is at the Mackenzie River at Blackwater here and this does flood quite regularly uh, and it does see some pretty dramatic floods as well. I mean this is not uh, unforeseen of this uh, flood camera here but you can see just how much water is flowing through here. Now if you're a friend of the channel you know exactly what this creek looks like when it's dry and exactly what it looks like right now because it's right in front of you but have a look at how how much water is flying through here. There's a causeway that runs through here that's about five meters underwater right now and actually a weir, like a full-blown weir board slash dam thing uh, just over here just towards the left-hand side of the flood camera. So it really is a bit of a busy site right now. A lot of flood waters moving through and just 24 hours ago whilst it was still pretty dramatic it was a lot lower than where it is right now. So you can see more water still continuing to pour in through here and it's not being helped by further showers and thunderstorms in this part of Queensland here so that is not good news indeed but we're likely to see pretty negligible rises to water levels in the next couple of days, which is the good news. It's a silver lining to what's been a pretty bad couple of weeks for this part of Queensland. But what's this forecast right now? What's going on? Well, we are expecting the monsoon to strengthen. That's going to happen through early next week. And then as a result, we're likely to see a tropical low pressure system or even a tropical cycling get spun out as a result of that tropical low. So what we're going to see is moisture get dragged in here, basically because of the development of this tropical low over here, 16U, which is the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji and our WA system that we'll talk about shortly. That's going to wrap up quite nicely through this weekend and into early next week and these northwesterly winds here through the Arafura Sea into the Gulf of Carpentaria here they're going to really begin to pick up and then connected with the low pressure system slash tropical cyclone at this point early next week that's going to be heading down towards New Caledonia we are expecting a big low pressure trough to kind of really connect this stuff up and areas of low pressure to begin to be spun out as a result of this low pressure trough, so this monsoon trough that's really going to get its act together. And you can see slowly but surely throughout the course of early next week, we do see the development of some areas of low pressure where we do get that rotation starting to get itself spun up. You can see this southeasterly flow here through the Coral Sea, and then that quickly spins up in towards a southwesterly flow through here, and then a westerly flow associated with this monsoon. So very broad areas of low pressure forecast to spin up. And when we've got monsoon low pressure systems like this, you know, those very big, broad, and squished areas of low pressure, Sometimes what they can do, a certain side or a certain part of that low pressure trough can actually split off and break away and develop into its own tropical low. And that's typically the origin of a lot of monsoonal based tropical low pressure systems into the Coral Sea. The ones that don't normally get that strong and just provide a boatload of rainfall to northern Queensland, this is normally the origin of these systems here. So that paints the picture, but we're not really expecting anything crazy or anything too organized. It's gonna become a severe tropical cyclone and we're certainly not looking at some small tight system here going into the Queensland coastline. If something does develop, it's very likely to be quite broad and messy and disorganized in nature. And I believe Tropical Cyclone Koji is actually a pretty good example of that. Well, I mean, we had that very broad and messy area of low pressure over here. It was huge, it was. It was absolutely massive as it moved in towards the North Queensland coastline approaching landfall with Tropical Cyclone Force winds extending for upwards of 100 kilometers away from the storm center. So really quite a big tropical low pressure system when it came uh, ashore. Um, and that's kind of a similar situation to what we could be looking at here if a tropical low does actually develop. It will be a very broad and messy disorganized 
standardized system. You can see it really slowly gets its act together through early next week, but sort of towards the end of next week, between the 22nd out to about the 25th or so of January, we may actually have a defined area of low pressure beginning to get itself developed. And you can see here the European forecast taking it up to tropical cyclone status pretty quickly before Australia Day heading it out into the Coral Sea. And then where this system goes from this point onwards looks pretty likely to be, you know, right down to the southeast, down to the graveyard. Because the jet stream is still quite far north, the jet stream's uh, kind of influence uh, starts to wear off anywhere towards the north of this line here, but it's still strong enough to, you know, drag these systems out and push them well towards the southeast as opposed to when the jet stream is further south uh, and runs through South Australia, New South Wales, as opposed to the NT and Queensland where these systems can then actually, you know, make it a bit closer to the Queensland coastline. And that's why it's pretty unusual to see a tropical cyclone make landfall on Queensland before February. Uh, this system here does have a better chance than it would normally have at this time of year because the jet stream is starting to get pushed back a little bit further uh, south than usual, a little bit earlier than usual at this time of year. And it was also the reason why Tropical Cyclone Koji made a landfall on Queensland is because we didn't have anything, you know, screaming this system down into the graveyard or down towards New Zealand like we normally do at this time of the year. But typically Queensland starts to see tropical cyclone impacts and significant tropical cyclone impacts from about mid-February onwards through March and April. And if we think back to when some of the strongest tropical cyclones have made landfall on Queensland, they always tend to be late season storms, eight times out of 10. Don't get me wrong, they can still happen during the quieter months at the start of the season, but typically speaking, we only see these, you know, turning patterns towards the Queensland coastline uh, into the later parts of the season. We're not quite there just yet, which is why I'm still pretty confident that this system here, if it does actually get itself going, regardless of what the forecast models have to say, it looks like it is going to make its turn down towards the southeast. But that is with one small caveat, though. Similar to how the tropical cyclone over in New Caledonia is making that turn towards Queensland for a couple of days before it turns around, it looks a bit like a question mark on its side type track. This system here may be doing the exact same thing as well, because we do have that influence pulling the system towards the Queensland coastline initially, and it might make a southerly dive before being pushed back down towards the southeast, and this will really increase swell heights, uh, for example. Now, the AI forecast models, which have been nailing systems left, right, and center for the past 12 months, and absolutely nailed Tropical Cyclone Koji, have this approximate track here on their forecast. So that's something that we can look at and start to interpret and start to you know, think that this may actually be a reliable scenario right now. But before we start making preparations and plans ahead of this tropical cyclone here, if it even does influence the Queensland area, we need to cross-reference with other major forecast models. And you can see between all four other major forecast models over here on windy.com, there are some very different pictures being painted in regards to what's going to be happening here. The axis, which we're looking at right now, has this kind of trough slash low pressure system slash rainfall depression establishing itself for far northern Queensland. That would be a disaster from a flooding standpoint. The East Murph is the one with the tropical cyclone. The GFS is also calling for a tropical cyclone to develop somewhere out into the Coral Sea, but in terms of the Queensland impact are looking pretty unlikely right now, which is quite unusual for the GFS. It typically has that very strong landfall bias. But again, you can see that track where it temporarily tracks towards Queensland and then gets pushed back out to sea. Same deal with this system here, 14U, and it looks like the same thing with what major forecast models are actually saying here in regards to something that may develop around the North Queensland coastline. So just food for thought. And I don't know if you can tell right now that we're just rambling off thoughts here. We're just, you know, so I'm just telling you what I'm seeing on the forecast models right now. And please keep in mind that none of this is, of course, advice at this point in time. If you've been paying attention to what dates and what time this is, we're talking about about 10 days into the future. And if there's anything that I can say about tropical cyclone forecasting is don't even attempt it if it's more than 10 days out because things are just guaranteed to change. But you can start to pick up on some more reasonable trends in the seven to 10 day period. And that's what we're in right now. Tropical cyclone isn't expected in the next seven days, but one may develop in the seven to 10 day period. And we're now in the time where we start looking looking for trends and start looking for inconsistencies and consistencies between the forecast models. And we've now got a few that we can make comments on and say that this is or is not a Queensland uh, threat or situation to be worried about. And I can decisively say right now that for Northern Queensland and Central Queensland and everybody else around Queensland, this is not NOT a threat to Queensland in the slightest right now. So don't prepare, just watch this space closely. It's kind of a watch but don't act type situation. Check back in early next week and I'll have some more details in regards to this system here. The system that is much more of a watch and maybe start to consider tidying up the backyard and you know just getting ahead of things ahead of a tropical cyclone coming through is this West Australian one here. And that's because of the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji, which are now located into the top end of the Northern Territory. Now the Bureau of Meteorology have designated this as tropical low 16U now, which means that they're not keeping tropical cyclone Koji. They reckon tropical cyclone Koji is completely carted. And because it is no longer an extra tropical cyclone or an ex-tropical cyclone, it's now a very broad area of tropical low pressure that's likely to 
to you know wrap itself up and make itself into a bit more of a concise area of low pressure that's a fair call so this system if it does develop whilst it will be the remnants of tropical cyclone koji in some small way it's not going to pick up the name of tropical cyclone koji yet if i am interpreting the bureau of meteorology's wording, wording correctly which i believe i am now heading out to the joseph bonaparte gulf and then down into the indian ocean we're going to see this system here substantially intensify if it can keep itself offshore and the reason for that is we've got very favorable uh, conditions out here namely sea surface temperatures which kind of anywhere towards the north this line here are about uh, 28 to 30 degrees plus and in a few spots we're going to be talking about temperatures here closer to the uh, west australian coastline here about 30 to pushing up towards 31 degrees celsius now this is like putting rocket fuel in, the, in a car it's going to go absolutely nuts it's going to go crazy and tropical cyclones love these sort of warm oceans particularly when they start getting up to the 30 or the 31 degree mark they can produce some very significant thunderstorms they can intensify very quickly and we've also got very limited wind shear as well associated with this tropical cyclone which means the structure of this system here is likely to be able to organize very quickly as a result and we've also got a lot of moisture and humidity here coming in from the uh, Indian Ocean here and from Indonesia and you can just see that generally speaking we've got a lot of cloud and thunderstorm activity typically before January you uh, looking at pretty clear skies over the Indian Ocean but now it's very turbulent in nature we've got a lot of We've got a lot of cloud and thunderstorm activity here. You can see a massive area of convection over the Kimberley region this morning. Uh, and that just goes to show that we are in a very moist environment right now across the Kimberley coastline and then into the Indian Ocean that this system here is going to have an absolute birthday party uh, within. So very, very favourable, looking very healthy for a tropical cyclone to develop. And as such, the numerical models that we're looking at right now have gone absolutely bananas with it. So likely to get its act into gear on Monday or Tuesday, moving offshore from the Kimberley coastline and then very quickly intensifying in what looks to be a very favourable environment. Now, forecast modeling is still pretty inconsistent right now there's definitely a lot of inconsistencies between some of the more major forecast models here uh, into what we can be expecting in regards to potential tropical cyclone development a couple of forecast models are calling for this system here to hug the Kimberley coastline and enter in as maybe a weak tropical cyclone up into the northern Kimberley a few of the forecast models are calling for a moderate tropical cyclone into the broom area and then even more forecast models are calling for an absolutely crazy tropical cyclone situation here into the Pilbara coastline around Caratha or Port Hedland now all of these are currently very plausible but you get the picture here we're going to see this system initially track down towards the southwest and then we're going to see this system make a u-turn and that u-turn looks to be happening sometime around friday and the reason for that is if we pan down here and we have a look at what's going to be happening on friday we've got a weak low pressure system sweeping through to the great australian bite and that's going to brush up against southwestern wa on thursday and that will begin to pull this system into its uh grips through Friday and then into Saturday. So this system here has got until about the 23rd of January or on Friday. Uh, if it hasn't crossed the Kimberley coastline or the Pilbara coastline at that point in time, it's gonna to continue to head out towards the Southwest until Friday the 23rd of January before it's gonna make that U-turn and that very sharp turn back in towards the West Australian coastline. And wherever that system is when it makes that U-turn and then starts to head Southeast is gonna dictate where that landfall is gonna be. So it's gonna be a pretty nuanced and intricate forecast here, heavily dependent on when this system does make that U-turn, which we're not gonna know for a couple of days now just, in, uh, just considering with where this system is likely to develop, I reckon it's going to make that U-turn probably a bit uh, later rather than sooner, which will likely present us with the risk of a stronger tropical cyclone going into a more southerly based location, so Caratha or Port Hedland. But that's just my take on it right now. That's just what I'm seeing on the numerical forecast models. It really could happen anywhere between Exmouth up to about Columba Roos. We discussed in this morning's forecast update and the AR forecast models and a bunch of other forecast models have a pretty even split in regards to where the system could come ashore, which means the uncertainty has never been high for this system here. Now, typically what I like to do is wait for a system to develop and see how it gets itself going, if it's going to be a small system, if it's going to be a big system, how it's moving and tracking uh, before I start calling for uh, specific track locations and areas that are going to be under that watch area or areas that you need to be watching out. But because this is likely to become such a strong system, particularly if it does head in towards southwestern uh, areas or a little bit further towards the southwest than what other forecast models are saying, I would just like to say if you live between Exmouth and Columbaroo, check in on the forecast every single day. Don't go out and cancel plans just yet don't make uh, major preparations don't go to the shops don't panic buy don't do all of that hoo-ha that Queenslanders seem to be doing in regards to tropical cyclones coming through um, as of late and you can't really blame them considering tropical cyclones are still a very dangerous weather event but don't uh, go out there and start making mass preparations ahead of a tropical cyclone that hasn't even formed yet just give it a couple more days but you need to be checking in on the forecast every single day and what we're going to be looking for in the next couple of days it, combined with what we're looking for over in Queensland is consistencies is the same forecast model 
calling for the same situation at the same time every single day? Or are we seeing, you know, big changes? Are we seeing an Exmouth landfall run one run or a Broom landfall the next run? Are we seeing a Category 5 down in Exmouth and then a Category 1 in Broom and then vice versa the next day? Those are inconsistencies. And if we're seeing inconsistencies, that's where the forecast becomes very uncertain. But if we're seeing run after run after run of going into the same part of the coastline at the same intensity at the same time frame, that's when we're going to start to make some, uh, start calling some shots here. And that's when we're going to, uh, you know, have a bit of an idea as to where the system's going to go at exactly what time. And that's likely to happen sometime early next week when this system does begin developing into a tropical cyclone here offshore from the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf coastline here uh, in the Kimberley region of Western Australia and into the top end coast of uh, the Northern Territory. It's the same deal over in Queensland as well. We're just going to wait and see where the system does begin to get itself spun up, if it does even get itself spun up at all, whether or not it's going to be a broad rainfall depression or tropical low pressure system or a fully fledged tropical cyclone. Still a lot of details out there for the oceans to decide and for uh, the forecast to flip flop and mull over. Anyways, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. It's a comprehensive one. We've covered a lot of bases here. So if you have enjoyed it, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel as well. A massive thank you to our channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. Of course, I could not remember show about them so of course as always their support is massively appreciated any questions or comments leave them in the comment section down below i'll have plenty more updates to throughout the course of today and also as we head out towards the weekend and into early next week over on the facebook page as well so make sure you do go and check those out if you live in a cyclone prone location you need to be ready for cyclones uh, at this point in time so have the garden you know ready to go ship shape in case a tropical cyclone does take uh, aim for your location just make sure your pre-season -pre preparations are well and truly done they should be you've had plenty of time to do so but yeah, this video really does emphasize the point that we are in tropical cyclone season now, and we're gonna be seeing these dual threats start to pipe up as we enter February, March, and April. It's gonna get busy, so make sure you do stick around and subscribe for your nationwide home of tropical cyclone forecasts. But that is gonna be all for me today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.